So the question is, is what is a subdomain? So if you're going to a site on the internet and you put in, say, www.failednormal.com, or possibly if your company organization is failednormal.com and you're trying to access your email services, you might go to mail.failednormal.com, or if you're trying to access some kind of file services, you might go to ftp.failednormal.com. Failed normal is the domain name. The first part before that first period is the subdomain. So www, email or mail, FTP, VPN, so on and so forth. So what subdomains are used for is they're, able, they're a way to give your users one coherent naming strategy in order to access the internet or the network services that your company is providing. So what you can do is for the website, uh, www.failnormal.com can point to a specific web server, mail.failnormal.com can point to your email server, ftp.failnormal.com can point to your FTP server. Let's say you want to give VPN access to your users. You can then set up a subdomain vpn.failnormal.com. And so if people want your people in your organization want to access the VPN services, they would plug that in for the address and then plug in their username and their credentials in order to log into that VPN service. So one of the important things to understand about subdomains is that subdomains do not have to point to the same servers. This is a way to give your users a coherent naming strategy, but on the back end, it can point to a lot of different places. So let's say you have a website and you also have a re human resource portal. So let's say you want your employees to be able to see how many vacation hours they've accrued, uh, be able to request vacation time, see what their insurance policy is, that type of thing. Well, what you can do is you can have www.failnormal.com. That will point to your normal website. So that will go to your normal web server and whatever is on your normal website will be there. But then you can have HR dot failnormal.com and you can have that pointed to some kind of oracle portal and that will be your human resources portal for people to be able to access their employment records or anything like that so it's important to understand that subdomains absolutely do not have to point to the same servers now many times in the real world uh, if your network is set up uh, poorly or you don't have a lot of money, your email server and your web server and your FTP server and your VPN server, especially in a Microsoft world, may all reside on the same server, but it's important to understand that they don't have to. So you can have an Oracle portal uh, that's a completely different server, completely somewhere else, versus where your web server is, the email, so on and so forth. The other nice thing with subdomains is you can point subdomains either at IP addresses, using something called an A record, we'll talk about later, or to other domain names using what are called C name records. So let's say for failnormal.com, uh, we have a web web server uh, that provides uh, the web services, failnormal.com, but then we have an email server and we decide to use Google Apps. Well, you sit there and you think about it and you want to make it easy for your users to be able to access the mail server uh, with a naming strategy that they'll understand. So what you can do is you can have www.failnormal.com, www will point to an IP address. So you actually own your web server, you know what its IP address is, so you will point www www uh, to the IP address. On the other hand, for mail.failnormal.com, you're going to be purchasing a service from Google or maybe from Microsoft using their Outlook 365, something like that. Then what you can do is you can have mail.failnormal.com and that would point to a domain name. So that would then point to, you know, email services.google.com or something like that. So that's one of the nice things about this is using this one kind of domain name strategy, you can point to many different services, many different servers, whether it's an IP address using an A record, whether it's an actual domain name using a C name record, you can point to all of these different things. You can have one nice naming strategy. It makes life a lot easier for your users. And so that's what a subdomain is and that's why it's important.